that if you ever in in the Alton area, head on out to Godfrey, lose your, uh, how can I say, your map quest or whatever, and go to a church of God in Christ, where the pastor is not Ron Reed, and you're most welcome, there's visitors and viewers. It's at 4712 North Alley Street. The services start at, um, which is prayer, starts at 9. Sunday school starts at 9.30. Uh, then the regular service starts at 11 o'clock. Then we have evening service start at 5. And we have the regular service start at 6 o'clock. You're welcome to come. There's viewers and visitors. You're welcome. We're open on to the open love family of the Church of God in Christ. Oakwood Church of God Christ Christ. Amen. Man. And my topic on today is are you holy like God says be holy? That's my topic on today. Are you holy like God says be holy? Are you living holy? Amen. We understand that we serve a holy God. Amen. And He's God everlasting, He's God eternal. He's God that will have a never ending. Amen. But we also understand that He is a holy God, a righteous God. He's a God that don't will not tolerate sin. He, he's a God that will not tolerate unholiness. Amen. Right. He's a holy God. He won't holiness done. And even with his righteousness, you know, he said our righteousness as filthy rags. Amen. But his righteousness is not a filthy rag. Our, you know, we, we, we go about our, oh no, we go about trying to establish our righteousness and doing what we want to do and do what we feel is best to do. But we can't do that. We understand God is requiring and letting us know. He said, be, be holy for I am holy. Yeah. He, he just letting you know that you need to be holy at the end of the day. Make sure you're doing God's will, amen. Make sure you're walking in the spirit and not in the flesh, amen. But I'm, I'm going to be reading from uh, Leviticus uh, chapter 11, and that's uh, verse 43, 44, and 45. And when you find it, say amen. You shall not make yourselves unabominable with any creeping thing that creepeth, neither shall you make yourselves unclean with them that ye should be defiled. Thereon, for I am the Lord, your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy. For I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Amen. And read right like down to 47. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast and may be eaten, and the beast that may not be eaten. Amen. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Now we understand that Moses, he let Moses what he was about. He let Moses know that what type of God he was and what he expected. He told Moses, and Moses told the children of Israel. Okay? We, we notice, we all have read that the children of Israel were hard-headed, stubborn, didn't want to listen to Moses. They gave him a hard time, which they called, even caused him to get off. But he was trying, Moses was stressing to them that, you know, God has an expectation of what he wants out of you. You know, he's telling them what God was telling him what to do, and they didn't listen. They was giving him a hard time, but God was letting Moses know what type of God that he was and what he expected. And that goes for us, too, you know, even as a people, as humans, that he understands when he's dealing with us, that he's letting us know that we need to be holy at the end of the day. Amen? We can't get off thinking that we can go about establishing our own righteousness and doing what we're going to do, but we have to make sure that we're being holy. Then we have to do the things that are right. We can't be doing things that in secret or thinking nobody's looking at us that, you know, remember, you're serving God now. 
This is not man. Nobody gets by. You can't serve two masters. You can't wear two masks. You can't put on a, I gotta say, a facade or some kind of a, a mirage or something. Okay, this is my is like this. And then when I walk over, I change and be a whole different person. I'm doing unrighteous stuff now. You have to make sure you do it right. God's will at all times. You're being holy at all times. You know, we have scripture that say, let your life shine upon men that uh, they may glorify the Father which is in heaven. We have scripture that say, yes, you have to be a light. You know, God is a light. I mean, there's, there's two lights. There's a light there's a light out here and there's darkness out here. And apparently there's two kingdoms, one of light and one of darkness. Amen? So you have to make sure you choose which one. But if you if you walking with you walking with the Lord and you say you are Christ, you say that you're a man or woman of God, you have to make sure you're living it, that you are being holy, that you are walking in you're just you are you are with the light, the kingdom of light. Amen. You're not in the kingdom of darkness. Amen. So we want to make sure that we're doing those things like that. That we walk in the light. Amen. That I'm gonna move right over the reason we're going down. Move right over to uh Constellations, uh, that's two. Uh, excuse me, now. move on to three. Uh, two, three, and four. Well, one, two, three, and four. That's chapter three, verse one, two, three, and four. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Test your affections on things above, not on the things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Amen? So when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Amen? See? There you go. We must build our hopes and things on things eternal. You know, this world is temporary. You know? Things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are unseen are not temporary. Remember, they're eternal. There is no time. We're in a different time frame. When you're human, you're on this earth, you're in a different time frame what it is in heaven, in the eternal, the spiritual world, the unseen world out there and all that. That's eternal, you know? Remember, God is forever, you know? He's everlasting, God, you know? There is no ending. There is no, uh, how can I say, no time at all. We don't have time. We don't have time frame, but he's not. So when you pass the leave here, you're going into eternal time now. You're not in temporary time anymore. You're crossing over to eternal time, which you can stand before God, a holy God, and a righteous God. Now, huh? the God that unsaved have talked about, the God that Christians all of them have been talking about, now you're going to stand before him face to face. A holy God, a righteous God, amen? A God of our understanding, you know? That's one thing about what holy stand, holiness stands for. It's God's characteristics, 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 Lord, forgive me. It's God's righteousness, what he stands for. It's understanding, his love, like you say, love your neighbor like you love yourself, and love the Lord that God with all thy heart and soul and all thy mind. Those are the things of God that represent God, his holiness. Amen. That's what represents him. All those he said that uh I said, find my brother, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. You put on the whole arm of God that you may stand against the wiles of the devil. See? That's that's what God is saying. Put on your armor. Amen. Because you are a soldier in the Lord, amen. You know, you're a holy person there. You're a peculiar people, you're a righteous person, you know. You're somebody, amen. But you're holy, you live holy. And what you have to do the things that God is requiring. You want to be just like our, you know, how can I say it? You want to be just like our big brother Jesus. Amen. Who was, went about his father's business. Amen. And you see that at the end of the day, God even said to himself, this is my beloved son who I am well pleased. He was well pleased with his son. Amen. He did God's will. You see, Jesus didn't mess up. You know, he was that example. Uh, I can give everybody an example how it was a time where some years ago, and my mom, she had got saved. She joined the church, and it was what a of God. Okay, she she invited us, me and my wife and my kids at that time. They were little at that time, and she invited all of us to come over. Amen. 
to visit the church. They had it, they had it outside the tent. And to show you how, with, you know, holiness upon us and the light is shining, I never met her pastor. That was the first time I had met him. But church is always far because we got there late. The minute me and my wife and kids, we walked up, he said, oh, man, he said, oh, boy. He said, look what I have here. I have some holy and sanctified some church people that's coming in. Oh. And he had already spoke, me and my wife, that we, that what we had stood for. The minute we got there, he just seen it. You know, the spirit, I didn't say, the saint know the other saints. He just knew it. I never met him before. He never met me before. He said, oh, I'm always just let y'all come on up and let you speak. You know, he even let me preach that night. He preached that day there, which is turned tonight. But he even let me preach that day. Amen? But that goes to show you that the holiness and that walking in God, let my light shine among men, that my Heavenly Father can be glorified. Amen? That he was glorified. You know, you don't have to run around telling nobody that you're holy, that you are a saint. Uh, you don't have to wear a cross. You don't have to wear none on your shirt. You don't have to wear those things. All you have to do is just live it. Just be a true and a hearer and a doer of the word of God. And you'll be an only. That's all you got to do. I mean, you don't have to, you have to show or wear a bumper sticker on your car. You don't have to have them on your car. You don't have to have them on your shirt. You don't have to do none of those things. Sir. But just let it speak for itself. All you have to do is be a true hearer and a doer of the word. And that's being holy. That's being like the Lord is. Amen? That's just being just like him. Amen? You live in this life. Amen? A true hearer and a doer of the word. Okay, I'm going to keep on. I'm going to move around to another scripture. And I'm going to go to uh, Colossians 12. I mean, that's Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, uh, all the way down to 17. It says, God, okay, oh, excuse me there, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy, beloved vows of mercies, kindness, humbleness, of mind, meekness, and long suffering. Because, you know, to live for the Lord and to be holy and uh, commit your body as a living sacrifice, it's going to be some suffering. And you're going to have the ups and downs. But, you know, in spite of all that, because don't get it, because some people think that when you get saved, that all your troubles are over, you're not going to have any more troubles anymore, that it's going to be ice cream and cake, peaches and cream, and everything's going to go well. Amen? But to live and to die for the Lord is a gain, amen. You know, you're going to either suffer. It's two kinds of suffering. Either you're going to suffer for righteousness or you're going to suffer for wrong. You have to choose. I don't know about you, but I'm going to suffer for righteousness. You know, I'm going to live for the Lord. I'm going to be holy like God, amen. I'm going to live for him, amen. If it's suffering or anything I go through, like the scripture says, endure hardship like a soldier. Amen. I, I said that before. So you got to endure it too. Because things go trouble is going to come. The enemy is going to come. All this thing. But we have to endure hardship. That's, that's, that's God's way right there too. Just endure hardship like a soldier. Just endure it. Because you're going to go through some things. Amen. We also, all, all the saints know that. We know what it takes to live for the Lord. We know what it's about. And then you know what God stands for. Huh? He's God everlasting, yeah. And what the song said, holy, you're holy, and we lift you up. That's he is holy. He's a holy God. Amen. But he also understand, we also understand that he is a God that has a son. Amen. And his name is Jesus. He's our mediator between God and man. Amen. But also, remember, he's our mediator now because you in this temporary time. But when you pass over, he's not the mediator anymore. Now you understand, he's your judge now. Amen? He's your judge. But as you're living and you're working out your soul salvation, you've been a true here to do the word, you've been holy like Christ, well, and God is here to help you, Jesus is here to help you, he's your mediator, he's the leading God you, the Holy Spirit, which he left the comforter here, to lead you guys in our spirit too. Amen. But he's the mediator between God and man. See? He's talking to his Heavenly Father for about us. 
even though he did leave a comment here, we do have the comment, which is the Holy Ghost, thank God, for the Holy Ghost, is a person's wonderful gift. But also, we have a mediator, and also, like I said, we need her. He's standing before God. Now he's your judge, but Jesus is your judge now. So it changes, amen? But I'm going to go ahead and finish reading. So down one. Okay, and forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. And above all things, put on charity. See, you got love too, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also ye are called in one body. And be thankful, and let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and abolishing one another and in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. See, this is what God is expecting out of you. Now, that's long suffering. Kindness, all this represent Christ. Now, these are the things not to do. See, because if you read on down here to five, which is uh, Colossians, uh, verse three, chapter three, is five. When you find it, say amen. It's Colossians, chapter three, and verse five. It says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, internal, internal, excuse me, infection, the evil, corruptions, and which is adultery. For which things say, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Amen. See, those are things that you can't do. We got to make sure that we're showing love, we're forgiving, because God said, if you don't forgive them, He won't forgive you. And that we're not committing adultery, that we're not committing fornication, that we're not stealing, that we're not, we're not doing none of those things that is contrary to God. You know, you see that the enemy, he do things, he's trying to talk to into things that is against God, this opposite. What God say don't do, he tell you to do it. See, that's the way that works. But we also understand, we do, we make sure that we resist the devil. Because the Bible says you resist the devil, then he shall flee. See? Make sure you resist him. You lose the word on him, make sure that, look, I'm holy. And if he tries to tell you what you're not, you let him know I'm holy. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a child of the high priest. I'm a child of God. Amen? I'm somebody. You know? You're not going to do this to me. I'm going to lose the word on you. You're going to stop. And you see that the word will get, get him off you. Because, you know, see, God's word is stronger than any two inch wall, amen? You know, we know how powerful God's word is. We all know that. We read the scripture. It is what it is. But these are the things that we a saint should not be doing, amen? We make sure that we're walking in the spirit and that we're truly living for God. Amen? And I'm going to move right along. I have a couple of scriptures I'm going to read, which is... uh. Over here, there we go. And I'll be reading. Uh, I'm gonna start with Romans 13, chapter 13, and verse 12. When you find it, say amen. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, let us put on the armor of light. Amen. Just going back to that scripture. You know, what well, I say, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be to stand against the wild of the devil. See, that is the armor of life that you have on. Amen? So you can stand against the wild of the devil. Now, the NIV says that there's tricks and schemes. But the regular Bible says the wilds of the devil. Amen? So that is the armor of life. Amen? See, then you read right along over here. I'm going to read you another scripture. Okay, well, hurry, go right here. Okay, what is the meaning of holiness? Amen? Dedicated or consecrated to God? Or a 
religious purpose for the Bible. Amen. See, we want to be dedicated. We want true dedication to the Lord. Not halfway. How that song say, Lord, I'm running. 99 just won't do. We want 100% and more. Amen. We want to be totally dedicated to the Lord. We want to concentrate on God. We want to make sure that we're doing God's will. Because we want to be holiness and righteous, just like He is. Amen. To walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. And then we're going to move on to Leviticus. Um, at 19 and 2, speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for the Lord your God am holy. The children of Israel, all the stuff they did, God still was telling them, Know that I love y'all, 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 God, and that, you know, y'all need to be holy, just like I am. Even when the children of Israel, he was on them too. Even though they gave all those problems and stuff, he loved the children of Israel too. In spite of their uh, stubbornness and their being hard-headed, you know, in spite of, amen? But we're going to move right along. Uh, then uh, I'm going to move on up to uh, that's Romans uh, 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by you, by your, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and accepted one to God. Which is your reasonable service. Amen. You know, holiness. And he said your reasonable service. Amen. It should be some, if you're saved for years, since you should know that automatically it's a reasonable service to do that. To be holy. Like God. You know the word, you study, he says, study to show that it's approved. You, you know, you study, you pray. You repent, you fast, and you're living this life all the best you can. Because you want to be holy like God. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but that's my that's my goal and my dreams to be holy like the Lord. So I can go back with him, amen. And he says he's coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. So hey, the church that he's coming back for us, the church is in you. You know, we make the church by living it and being true and holy and being a true hearer and a doer of the word. You know, we are the church. So that's what he's coming back for. Because when he comes back, you want when, he, when you stand before God, you want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You don't want him to say, depart from me, I never knew you. You work as a iniquity. So we all want that. Amen. So let's live a holy and saved life. Because we want to be with our Lord and Savior. We want to be with our big brother Jesus, who's on the right hand of God. Amen. Who is the son of living God. He was his son. He was holy. You see that even God even left us a precious gift, which is the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, which is to come. To even help us. To lead and guide us in all spirit and truth. That's the end of my topic on the day. Let us shout. And say thank you, Lord. Clap with a voice of triumph. That we have the victory in Jesus' name. And we thank God for saving us. And that we live for the Lord to be holy. Y'all pray for me and I'll go stronger than all. Amen. And I like to say, if there's anybody out there that like to be saved, you know, that's what I was just preaching about. You know, tomorrow's not promised to nobody. And if you're unsaved out there walking around, your mind is blind, here's your chance to get saved. You know, it's a wonderful life. And all I, all I need you to do is just repeat after me. I ask the Lord that I recognize that I am a sinner. And I ask the Lord to forgive me of my sins, of all my sins, and I accept your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for my sins, who was raised from the dead. And I do believe that he is, your son, he is the son of the living God. And I accept him as my Lord and Savior. So now you're saved, and, and all you have to do is find your Bible-based church and welcome to Oakwood, and then we'll get you a Bible, and then you can start on this walk to the Lord with a new life, saved life. You'll never be the same. Amen.